crystal clear blue water or dark nasty brown water? Which one's your favorite? <laughs> What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine and we're down here in the beautiful crystal clear water of Genie Springs Outdoors. And if you've never been here before, it's actually several different springs that surrounds a campground and each spring bleeds out into what they call the Santa Fe River, which is what you see here behind me. Now, compared to the springs themselves, the Santa Fe is very dark, it's kind of greenish or brownish. It's not what you would actually think of as clear water diving. However, we've had an absolute great weekend here this weekend and we've made several drift dives down the Santa Fe. Now the Santa Fe in itself is very swift moving water. It can go anywhere from say a one knot current and I've actually been in it when it was about 10 knots of current and it can get pretty dark very quickly. But I want to show you some highlights of what a drift dive is all about because a lot of people don't think you can do drift diving in inland waters. You think well if you're out there in the ocean you may be drifting with the current but there's a lot of good drift diving that can be done here in local waters whether you're in Florida or wherever you're at. So let's jump in real quick. I want to show you what a drift dive in a Santa Fe looks like on a good day. Alright guys, so I decided to commentate through this video just to kind of give you a better idea of what we're actually doing during the drift dive. And if I'm not looking at you guys, it's because I'm actually looking at the screen down here. So if I'm not looking at you, don't think I'm trying to be rude or anything. But here we are. We're actually at the edge of the Santa Fe River here. Um, and we're coming out of the Devil Spring system. So if you've ever been to the Jenny Springs area, basically you've got Little Devil, Devil's Eye, and Devil's Ears, three separate spring systems that feed out into the Santa Fe. Um, we are actually right next to um, the Devil's Ear system. If you've ever been there, that's where the big orange buoy is. Uh, but we're going by it now. And we're headed out into the Santa Fe River. Uh, we're probably at this point, we're about six, seven, maybe even eight foot deep. Um, but as you can see, it's relatively clear today. The Santa Fe is typically not this clear here in the area. Um, the flow is just phenomenal coming through here right now. If I had to guess, I'm gonna say we're probably in about three, four, maybe five knots current. Um, it, we're actually moving very, very fast as we go through here, which to me, for drift diving, that actually makes it a little bit more enjoyable um, as far as making a drift dive. You know, a slow drift is to me is nothing more than just swimming. Uh, I'm not doing anything. I'm just holding trim in the water and the currents push me. Now, if the camera is swaying back and forth, left and right, it's because I'm actually holding the camera in my hands and as I'm swaying back and forth to kind of see what I can see using the camera. Uh, but as you can see, I'm moving very, very swift through here. Um, there's a couple of fish that we see here. I think we come across some freshwater mullets. Uh, there may or may not be some turtles in this. I don't remember to be honest with you, but uh, yeah, all around it's just a fun, relaxing dive. I thoroughly enjoy drifting while diving just because I don't have to do nothing. My breathing rate is extremely low simply because I'm not doing anything. I'm just letting the water push me through the water column. Um, every now and then you'll see some trees and stuff in this. I think we just saw one about 10 seconds ago or something. You always want to be careful during drift dives of strainers and things like that. Basically what a strainer is is as you're moving through the water column it can actually catch you in it. You don't want to get caught in any of those. Uh, there's a bullet top fish there. Quite a few of them in the Santa Fe. There's also some gar and some alligator gars. There are the occasional alligator um, that you will catch here. Here's a prime example of what a strainer would be, that tree there. And I've, I actually grabbed onto it uh, temporarily so that I could signal to my uh, die buddies that was with me that I'm still okay or whatnot. But if you're caught in a current like this or if you are drift diving and you need to take a break, all you've got to do is just reach down, grab a hold of something, and it will kind of lock you there in position. Might spin you around when you do that, but that kind of want to, or that leads me into what I want to talk a little bit about your fin position in this. If you dive with your legs up, saying that the horizontal trimmed out position, but your legs are brought up, maybe you're frog kicking or whatnot. Anytime that you're in a swift current like this, you want to make sure that your fins are actually flat. They're parallel to the bottom or parallel to the surface, because if you start to tilt one fin up, the current's going to catch it and it's just going to spin you around. So 
depending on what body position you're using in the water and how you're trimmed out, make sure you keep your fins flat. You want, like I said, the fins need to be parallel with the bottom or the, the surface. Um, but drift dives are actually fun. Now I think we're in about 15, maybe 20 feet of water. And as you can see, the visibility is just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, typically this drift dive here takes anywhere say from 25 to 30 minutes to make and based off where you started at are you starting at say the devil's ear system and immediately going into the river which is what we did here or do you start at the little devil system which is the canal if you've ever been to Jenny you'll understand what I'm talking about it's a canal that feeds out into it uh, I have made this dive with hardly limited flow in about an hour so, uh, but this particular one here is relatively short. I think our total dive time was about 15 minutes. That included swimming up into the canal at Jenny and even spending a few minutes at Jenny just exploring. Um, but it is just because it was such a fast moving current for us. But as you can see, we're just still moving along. Now, when you do drift dives like this, you really need to know where your exit point is. Not knowing where your exit point is is going to make you overshoot that exit point and then you're either going to have to fight that current swimming back upstream or you're going to have to get out on further down from your exit point and obviously walk up to get your vehicle and drive it back down. Now if you've ever been to the Jenny Springs uh, outdoors or their campground there, there's multiple exit points. We usually just do the drift from the Devil Springs over to Jenny Springs, but you can actually drift on down the Santa Fe. They've got Twin Springs and Deer Springs, which are exit points as well. Um, this is a very popular site for uh, people who are in kayaks or stand up paddle boards or canoes and even Jenny Springs Outdoors will actually rent inner tubes for you to get out there and drift all the way down the Santa Fe or the short distance of, of their campground there. You can go further up the lake itself or the river up itself and get in and you don't necessarily have to get in at the Devil Spring systems. It's just we do this little area say from the Devil Springs to Jenny Springs so much we feel very comfortable uh, doing it there. But yeah, as you can see, once again, just crystal clear, um, which is phenomenal for the Santa Fe River. Um, you can usually find some treasures here if you do some treasure hunting. I, I know I found some masks, I found cell phones, uh, sunglasses, you know, just all different types of things. But if you really spend your time and, and you know, grab onto the bottom and hold yourself there for a little bit and look around, you can find a lot of stuff. Um, you know, we, we just got back here from the Springs and it was very, very crowded even in in, in November so it's a very very popular site so there's a lot of treasures that you can find there's usually more fish species than what we're actually uh, seeing here on camera now uh, like I said there's gar there's alligator gars there's actual alligators there's turtles of all different species um, of course brim and bass uh, so you you can see a wide variety of different fish species um, but it's a great place to get a couple of specialties in. Obviously, we're doing a drift diver. You can get your waves, tides, and current certification. Uh, you can do ecology certifications here simply because there's su such a, a wide variety of those species there. Um, but yeah, all in all, this is an absolute fun dive. Uh, we should be getting to the end of the drift now. I want to talk a little bit about our exit point here. Um, this particular dive, as you get to your exit point, you're going to notice that there's a ramp. It's just a solid wall or a ramp of sand there. And that's how we know that that's going to be the entrance to Jenny Springs. Um, and if you dive it a couple of times, you'll kind of get the hang of it. Uh, but you'll notice that there's going to be a ramp here off to my left and we're just going to slowly swim up that ramp. Now, you will also notice that the current almost comes to a standstill and I'm no longer getting pushed downstream because as I come up that ramp, we've got the flow of the springs pushing out and there's billions of gallons of water a day that come out of Jenny Springs. So I'm having to actually fight that current as I come up the ramp, the current that's flowing out of the springs is actually pushing me back out into the river. So you'll see that, you'll see that everything just starts to slow down and I will actually start to kick a little bit to get up the ramp and then once I get in the canal that leads to Jenny Springs, then obviously I've got to kick and, and force my way up through there. Typically speaking, if I take students for their first time on this drift dive, um, what I'll typically do is once we get into the canal, because it's relatively shallow, it's about four or five foot, is I'll have them take their fins off and actually walk the canal up, uh, depending on how heavy the flow is. If the water's down, 
you can actually pull yourself along the bottom, or I'm sorry, if the water's up, you can pull yourself along the bottom um, just because if the water's deep enough to do it, which is what you'll actually probably see in this video is I'm pulling myself along once I get up to the top. But another really neat feature and uh, another reason that I really enjoy doing a drift dive at this particular area is because of the water, the way the water changes instantaneously. As I come up this ramp here, you'll see in just a second, the water's going from clear water to absolutely crystal clear blue water just like that. It's almost as if somebody just flips the switch. And to me, that's always neat to see. Um, that, that transition of that color. But here I'm actually on the ramp, or I'm at the base of the ramp, I'm starting to come up now. You'll see the canal start to appear, then that's the canal that leads into Jenny Springs. And just watch the clarity change. As I come up into it, uh, it just, it's like somebody just flipped the switch. We went from clear water to absolutely crystal clear water. And here you'll see I'm actually fighting the current in the opposite direction now. So everything is starting to slow down. So as I'm drifting with the current, now I've, I've got a current pushing against me. So things are gonna start to slow down as we come up into the canal. What are you gonna see here? Uh, as far as ecology goes, there's plenty of freshwater fish, there's fr freshwater flounder. If you guys have never seen a freshwater flounder, they're little bitty guys, they're about that big, uh, but th they're fun to play with. You can actually catch them in your hands. Usually what I'll do is I'll put my hand in front of it, kind of block it, and then I'll, I'll dig my hand up underneath from the, the backside and then just kind of cut my hand over it, take my hand, just kind of wipe it in a water column like this, all the sand will go away, and then when you open your hand, you're actually holding a freshwater flounder. So it's really cool to do that as well. Um, but yeah, there's just so much to see here. Now, as we get to the back side of this canal, which is where the spring head is, uh, you're gonna see a ton of swimmers out here. This is a very, very popular swimming site um, year round. Doesn't matter the month, January through December, it's very, very popular. Um, it, I've been going to Jenny Springs for well over 20 years now, and I've noticed that it has really started catering more to the the swimmers and the snorkelers than it has the scuba divers. With that being said, one of the things that I would give you some advice on if you've never been to Jenny, maybe you're going for the first time, is stay in the Devil Springs area first and then once you kind of get the hang of things, then drift down into it. Because if you're trying to walk those stairs up and down, you know, to get into Jenny with all the people around, it's just gonna be miserable for you, unfortunately. But if you do a drift dive down, most of them are in the hole of Jenny. They're, they're not up in that canal. As you can see, there's hardly anybody here. Um, but you can see a lot more by doing it the way, you know, drifting down and then swimming up into Jenny versus just walking up and down the stairs. Um, but here we're probably in about six foot of water. The water was actually up uh, this trip, which, which was good. I like it when it's up. It gives me a little bit more to see. I don't have to walk and fight that current. Um, I'm actually pulling myself along now. I'm just reaching down and pulling myself in the sand, uh, trying to, to fight that current. But I'm gonna actually come into some really, really shallow water temporarily here. Um, and these rocks that you're actually seeing now, those are limestone rocks. They're not just, you know, standard granite rocks or what you would see in a river or something like that. It's actual limestone. It's the same limestone if you've ever been to Jenny and you've went down in the ballroom, which is a cavern at Jenny. It's the same limestone. It's just the upper side of it. So every now and then you'll see bubbles come up from this limestone when you're diving on the top part of it. And that's because divers go down in the cavern part and as they exhale, their expired gas will go up and it'll find crevices and holes in the limestone and work its way up. So all these little bubbles that you're seeing here, that's from divers that are down inside the cavern or have been in the cavern and that's their expired gas coming up through it. So it's pretty neat to see. Uh, this tree here is actually pretty famous. Um, this tree has been here for as long as I can remember. Um, and it's kind of the opening to Jenny Springs, if you will. It's something that I really like. So I'm going to pop up over it. Now you can start to see there's swimmers everywhere here. Uh, but as I pop up here, you're just going to see the water once again. The clarity just changes again. As you get closer and closer to the spring head, it's going to get nothing but clear and clear. Um, and I really enjoy it here. One of my favorite places, everybody asks me, what's your favorite place to dive? I'm not sure I got an answer to that simply because it depends on what I'm doing. But if I'm teaching, say, open water, or if I'm teaching drift diving, if I'm teaching, say, uh, rescue, anything like that, 
bar none, Jenny Springs is one of my favorite places to go. It is limited. There are certain things I can't teach there, such as deep diver. It's not deep enough. You know, the grate with that's down in the ballroom at Jenny averages about 58 feet, so obviously it's not going to be deep enough to teach deep. Uh, in the SSI deep course, you're required to make three dives, one to 60, one to 80, and one to 100, so I can't teach deep here. But there's other uh, local springs to that area. There's one down in Williston, Florida called Blue Grotta. It goes down to 100 feet, so it's a great place to teach deep diver there. But it's just so versatile. You get, let alone deep, you can teach caves, cavern, night diving. This is a phenomenal dive site for night diving. It's one of my favorite places to make a night dive. But not only cave, cavern, uh, night, I can teach rescue, and teach waves, tides, and current, which is SSI's drift diver course. I can obviously teach open water, uh, DPV. DPV is going to be uh, very helpful, you know, getting yourself in and out of those currents. Uh, but there's just so many different courses that I can teach here. And it's just a fun place to be. It's, uh, there's a wide opportunity or wide range of places to actually make that dive here. But now we're coming up to the end of the dive. As you can see, everybody just kind of congregates right there at the stairs, a lot of swimmers. Uh, it is relatively chilly. The, the average water temp is between 68 to 72 year round. It never changes. We were actually very blessed this year or on this particular trip because the water temp was 76 degrees. But there you can see the other two divers that were with me. But Guys, that's it for the drift dive. I really hope that you enjoyed it. It's a fun dive, something I would highly recommend you doing if you ever visit Jenny Springs Outdoors. All right, so there you go, guys. That was a drift dive in the Santa Fe. We went all the way from the Devil Spring Systems all the way down to the Jenny Spring Systems. And there's several other springs here on the Santa Fe that if you've got a boat, you can gain access and then drift all the way down the Santa Fe River. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions on drift diving, check out SSI's Waves, Tides, and Currents uh, course. It's a great course to teach you the skills that you need and the equipment that you need to stay safe while drift diving. It's going to work in a river area like this. It's also going to work out in the ocean. But guys, once again, if you like our videos, simply smash that like button and definitely share these videos as well. By you watching our videos and sharing them, it supports us and it allows us to go out and make more educational videos for you guys. Guys, I really appreciate you watching these videos. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.